Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about the envelope punch board. This is the Stampin' Up! envelope punch board. As far as I'm aware, it's the same as the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. So if you have that, the things I'm going to show you today, you should be able to do on that. But this is the Stampin' Up! I'm a, a UK independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and this is the one we sell. It's a scoreboard. It's a corner rounder and it has a score tool and bone folder that fits neatly in into this little compartment here. A standard, it comes with 66 preset envelope sizes in inches and it has inches and metric, but it also comes with a sticker that you can put over here so if you prefer to work in metric it comes with this clear sticker that you just apply over there and it obviously comes with instructions but as well as being able to make 66 preset envelopes there are sites on the internet that you can type in envelope sizes and it will give you it will give you the measurements to cut your paper and then how to and where to score on this board and i'll put a link under this video so really you can make an envelope of any size as long as you can get a piece of paper big enough you may when you're scoring go off the board but you can still score so far and then you'll be able to fold it over and follow that that crease line down if your paper is very big but this board just does so much more. You can make, I'll show you a couple of envelopes I've just done quickly. This is the smallest envelope of these preset sizes that I made. And this is the biggest of the preset sizes. But you can do 66 sizes in between. And then as I say, you can make bigger if you've got bigger paper. This one, was with the paper cut at 11 and a half by 11 and a half so from a 12 by 12 piece of paper and this one was with a piece of paper of five by five so they're just a couple of envelopes you can use it to make i don't know if you can see that you can use it to make like file folder tabs you can make boxes i made this box just very quickly basically I got the idea to try this from the box for our mini glue dots. I measured this box and I think it's a three by three by one. <clears throat> I looked on here for a three by three box and then it told me I needed, if I wanted to make an envelope for this, a card this size, I'd use five and a quarter by five and a quarter. But what I did, I cut my paper an inch bigger all round and made it into a box so this is a box that I've made from the envelope punch board and as you can see it's the exact same size perfect size so that's a box I did then I decided I'd try and make a box for a set of cards so I've just got four cards here with envelopes. These are just cards I've made in the past. You'll probably have seen videos for these. I measured my envelope and my envelope, I think, was six and a half by four. So again, I looked on this board to see what size piece of paper I would need to make an envelope that size. And I added an inch all round to accommodate for making this box. And this is just um, some scrapbook paper I had. It's single-sided scrapbook paper, but you could make it in our Stampin' Up! Designer Series double-sided paper. You could make it in card. I just wanted to try it out. But basically, on this one, I don't know if you can see, but I actually cut the point off so it doesn't look like an envelope. It looks a bit more like a box. You can stick that down. I've just tucked this one inside. <clears throat> <clears throat> and it fits beautifully 
and that would make a nice gift box for a set of cards. And then I've also made a bow. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with this punch board. I'm going to show you today how to make a little envelope. I'm going to show you how to make the little file folder tab and I'm going to show you how to make a bow. Okay, so we'll start with an envelope. So just because I want to use a piece of this new designer series paper from my Love Blossoms stack that I showed you in a previous video, I've chosen a piece of six by six paper. I just need to turn this round to find the measurements. I look on here and it tells me to use a paper size of six by six <coughs> that would make that would be for a, a three inch by four inch card and it tells me that I need to score at two and five eighths so I'm not sure whether you'll see that or not so basically I've got my six by six car, uh, card or paper and I need to score at two, <clears throat> sorry, at two and five eighths. So I'm going to take the little bone folder out, going to slide my card or my paper in, slide it across to two and five eighths, and it's all clearly marked on here. I'm going to punch, and then you just put your scoring tool into the little gap on the front of the board I'll just turn it around so you can see you slide it in there and you line it up and score <clears throat> I'm going to turn it round and score it at two and five eighths again and punch turn it round again two and five eighths and again and assuming I can see properly and I've punched it and scored it at the same measurement every time I should now have an envelope now you can't really see the score lines on here because I think the paper's too patterned but I can see them so I'm going to fold and burnish and that is basically my envelope made. And that's it. You can round off the corners. In the back of this punch, there's a corner rounder. So this is just a corner rounder in its own right. So you'd slide that in there and punch. So then when you fold these in again, I don't know if you can see it this time, but this has got a rounded corner now. And here. I have to say, it's an amazingly bright day here today, which is a complete contrast from how it was yesterday. Yesterday was grey, wet, rainy and dark all day. Today is like a spring day. It's playing havoc with my camera in the room that I film in. So you may, when I'm, I'm trying to see, get the best angle to show you these things. Anyway, so that's a quick envelope. Now, if you want to make a kind of a file folder type edging, basically what you do... If you look in here, you slide your card in to, to just the edge of here. So here's a, a card. I'm going to put a, a tab on this end. So you slide this in just as, so the edge of the card lines up with the blade inside, which you'll see when you get yours and punch. And that's given us that kind of an edge. And now I'm just going to slide this along just to about two inches on this one. Doesn't really matter. And you get that. And what I'm going to do, normally I'd use a paper trimmer, but for speed, I'm just going to cut this off with scissors. I'm just going to try and eyeball it and hope I can get 
the straight line and that's given me now like a can you see it like a tab so that's a way to do that and then to make a bow you need three pieces actually this is just, I'll get another piece in a minute but you need you can make these any size but for the bow I'm going to show you <clears throat> you need a piece of card or paper that is one inch by six inches and a piece of card or paper that is one inch by five and then you need a scrap okay so I've got a scrap now this is about a quarter inch by about an inch and a half something like that on this one I just want to show you I originally put the band around the middle and I did it a quarter of an inch and then I thought I'd cut another piece of card and see how it looked cut at half an inch so that's why I've left that one loose just to show you it's your own preference really what you want to put how wide in the middle here so we'll start with the one by six so the first thing you need to do you punch at exactly half your width so if your width is eight inches you would punch it four. this is six inches so I'm going to put this in and line this edge up with three and punch and then flip it over line it up with three again and punch then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this left hand edge in to here and I'm going to line it up with the edge of this plastic here which is not going to be easy to try and show you but I'll try and hold it and see if you can see what I'm doing that's how I'm placing it in And I'm going to punch and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same and then I'm going to do the same on the other end <clears throat> flip it over and do the other side basically what I'm doing I'm chomping away the corners I'm going to hold it in the middle bend it with my bone folder just to give it a little bit of movement put that on one side and then this piece is the one by five so again half the length so whatever your length is you use half the measurement so I'm going to put this in <clears throat> at two and a half punch flip it over two and a half punch so you're left with that and then this time I'm going to put this edge centrally to this so whereas before I put it on one side I'm going to slide this in by eye centrally to the punch and punch turn it round and do the other end so that's what I've got that's how that one looks that's the base of my bow and this is how this one looked <clears throat> so now I need some glue dots you could use anything but I'm just using these for speed I'm going to put a glue dot on the end on each end of this and then because you've curled it with your bone folder it wants to curl for you I'm going to try and do this so you can see it. I'm going to fold this over so it looks like that. I'm not going all the way to the middle because you want this edge here and this edge to line up. So I'm going to fold it in. You can see where it starts to want to meet naturally and press so that's the bow I'm going to put another glue dot on the back in the middle line this up 
might turn it over actually and have the other side. Put those together and that's your bow. You could tie a ribbon around that or you could tie a tiny ribbon and put it on the front or a button or a bead, anything. But if you want to use card, again, I would give it a little bit. In fact, I'll go for the spot side. I'll give it a little bit of a bend just to encourage it. And then basically just wrap it round. It really only needs to be, for a bow this size, it only needs to be about an inch long this. So I might actually cut it. I think I've cut it a little bit too big. But basically just put it on, bend it with your fingers and stick it down with a glue dot. Just it's a little bit big. I'll leave mine loose for now. But that's your bow. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a box now. I'm going to put a link in the instructions underneath this video to a website where you can go and you can type in the measurements of the box that you want to make and it will tell you how you, um, what size paper you need and where you need to um, punch and score. But basically, because I want to use this new designer series paper again, which is six by six, I am going to make a box that I can make from this size piece of paper. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put my piece of six by six in. I'm going to line it up at two and three eighths. I'm going to punch and score, but I'm going to slide it along and I'm going to punch and score again, but this time at three and three eighths, so an inch bigger. Then I'm going to turn it round 180 degrees and I'm going to score and punch the opposite side. So lining up at two and three eighths, punch and score, and then at three and three eighths, punch and score. So those are opposite sides done. Now I'm going to turn it round and this time on the envelope punch board, there's a score line guide here. Looks like a little speech bubble. And that is what I'm going to line up with the lines I've just scored. So you won't be able to see this, but hopefully I will. So I'm going to line that one up, punch and score, slide it along to the next one. I'm not chosen a very good paper here for doing this, I'm afraid, but never mind. Punch and score, turn it round and again punch and score, punch and score. Now, you might be able to see the lines a bit better on here, but what I'll do, I'll fold and burnish it and then hopefully you'll see them. I thought this light coloured card would be easier to see on the video, but I think because it's so heavily patterned, it's not. But you may be able to see my score lines better now I've folded. So all that I need to do really now is decide, do I want my box opening on the top or do I want it opening a different way? I think I'm going to go for a box that opens this way. So, there's four squares here <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is just basically like normal box making, I'm going to cut up that score line, turn it round and do the same <clears throat> and they will become, <clears throat> or the bottom two will become my glue tabs for my box. And then the top two are the fat and you can either just fold it over like that or you can stick it inside. What you could do if you wanted to, you could cut it off across there so it looks more squared. But that's how you make a box with your envelope punch board. So as you can see, it's a really versatile board. <clears throat> Please like, share and subscribe.
and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.